everyone, this is Master Sean, and it's going to be a bit of a short video today, but welcome to this week's video. And for this week's video, I'm going to be going over, in general, critical theory on the Wikipedia page, and it looks like there's not that much to read, even though it expands into several different parts of the outline of critical theory, and I believe it's critical theory on, there's queer theory, different political theories, informational, uh, critical theorists, lists, and different things like that, but today we are just going to be going over the basics in a generalized term of critical theory. So let's go ahead and get started. Critical theory is a school of thought that stresses the reflective assessment and critique of society and culture by applying knowledge from the social sciences and the humanities. Okay. And the term critical theory has two meanings with different origins and histories. The first originated in sociology and the second originated in literary criticism, whereby it is used and applied as an umbrella term that can describe a theory founded upon critique. Thus, the theorists Max Hawker Horkheimer described the theory as critical insofar as it seeks to liberate human beings from the circumstances that enslave them. <laughs> In sociology and political philosophy, the term critical theory describes a neo Marxist philosophy of the Frankfurt School, which was developed in Germany in the 1930s. This use of the term requires proper noun capitalization, whereas a critical theory or a critical social theory may have similar elements of thought, but not stress its intellectual lineage, specifically to the Frankfurt School. Frankfurt School critical theorists drew on a critical method on the critical methods of Karl Marx and Sigmund Freud. Critical theory maintains that ideology is the principal obstacle to human liberation. Uh, critical theory was established as a school of thought, primarily by the Frankfurt School uh, theoreticians, Herbert Marcuse, Theodore Adorno, Max Horkheimer, Walter Benjamin, and Eric Fromm. Modern critical theory has additionally been influenced by Gorky, Gorky Lucas and Antonio Gramassi, as well as the second generation Frankfurt School scholars, notably Jurgen Habermas and Habermas's work. Uh, sorry, lost my place there. In Habermas's work, critical theory transcended its theoretical roots in German idealism and progressed closer to American pragmatism. Concern for social base and superstructure is one of the remaining Marxist philosophical concepts in much of contemporary critical theory. Now, postmodern critical theory uh, politicizes social problems by situating them in historical and cultural context to implicate themselves in the process of collecting and analyzing data and to relativize their findings. While critical theory theorists have been frequently defined as Marxist intellectuals, their tendency to denounce some Marxist concepts and to combine Marxist analysis with other sociological and philosophical philosophical traditions has resulted in accusations of revisionism by classical orthodox and analytical Marxists and by the Marxist slash Leninist philosophers. Okay, so these are the people that Dr. Jordan Peterson uh, and the intellectual dark web completely go against. Okay, I understand what critical theory is. Okay, so now let's go to the overview. Critical theory was first defined by Max Horkheimer of the Frankfurt School of Sociology in the 1937 essay, Traditional and Critical Theory. Critical theory is a social theory oriented toward critiquing and changing society as a whole. In contrast to traditional theory, oriented only to understand, understanding or explaining it. Horkheimer wanted to distinguish critical theory as a radical and mass E-M-A-N-C-I-P-A-T-O-R-Y form of Marx 
Marxian theory, critiquing both the model of science put forward by logical positivism and what he and his colleagues saw as a covert positivism and authoritarianism of orthodox Marxism and communism. He described a theory as critical insofar as it seeks to liberate human beings from the circumstances that enslave them. Critical theory involves a normative dimension, either through criticizing society for some general theory of values, norms, or thoughts, or thought criticizing it in terms of its own expounded values. The core concepts of critical theory are as follows. Number one, that critical social theory should be directed at the totality of society in its historical specificity, i.e. how it came to be configured at the specific point in time. And number two, that critical theory should improve understanding of society by integrating all the major social sciences, including geography, economics, sociology, history, political science, and uh, anthropology and psychology. Okay. The version of critical theory derives from Kant's 18th century and Marx's 19th century use of the term critique. As in Kant's critique of pure reason and Marx's concept that his work Das Kapital, or Capital, forms a critique of political economy. Okay. Uh, for Kant's transcendental idealism, Critique means examining and establishing the limits of the vitality of a faculty type or body of knowledge, especially through accounting for the limitations imposed by the fundamental irreducible concepts in use in that knowledge system. So Kant's notion of critique had been associated with the overturning of false, unprovable, or dogmatic philosophical, social, and political beliefs, because Kant's critique of reason involved the critique of dogmatic, theological, and metaphysical ideas, and was intertwined with the enhancement of ethical anatomy and the alignment critique of superstition and irrational authority. Ignored by many in critical realist circles, however, is that Kant's immediate impetus for writing his critique of pure reason was to address problems raised by David Hume, skeptical empiricism, which, in attacking metaphysics, employed reason and logic to argue against the knowability of the world and common notions of causation. Kant, by contrast, pushed the employment of the priori metaphysical claims as requisites for, if anything is to be said, to be knowable, it would have to be established upon abstractions distinct from perceivable phenomena. Okay. Marx explicitly developed the notion of critique into the critique of ideology and linked it with the practice of social revolution, as stated in the famous 11th of his thesis on Feuerbach. The philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point is to change it. One of the distinguishing characteristics of critical theory, as Adorno and Horkheimer elaborated in their Dialect of Enlightenment, 1947, is a certain ambivalence, excuse me, concerning the ultimate source or foundation of social domination, an ambivalence which gave rise to the permission. The, uh, the pessimism of the new critical theory over the possibility of human emancipation and freedom. This ambivalence was rooted, of course, in historical circumstances in which the work was originally produced, in particular the rights of national socialism, state capitalism, and massive cultural culture as entirely new forms of social domination that could not be adequately explained within the terms of traditional Marxist sociology. For Adorno and Horkheimer, state intervention in economy had effectively abolished the tension between the relations of production and material productive forces of society, a tension which, according to traditional critical theory, constituted the primary contradiction within capitalism, the market as an unconscious mechanism for the distribution of goods and private property have been replaced by 
decentralized planning and socialized ownership of the means of production. Okay, now continuing. Yet, contrary to Marx's famous prediction in the preface to the contribution to the critiques of political economy, this shift did not lead to an era of social revolution, but rather to fascism and totalitarianism. As such, critical theory was left in Jurgen Habermas's words, excuse me, sorry, without anything in quotes, in reserve to which it might appeal, and when the forces of production enter into a painful symbiosis with the relations of production that they were supposed to blow wide open, there is no longer any dynamism upon which critique could base its hope, end quote. For Adoro and Horkheimer, this posed the problem of how to account for the apparent persistence of domination in the absence of a very contradiction that, according to traditional critical theory, was a source of domination itself. In the 1960s, Jurgen Habermas, a proponent of critical social theory, raised the epistemological discussion to a new level in his knowledge and human interests by identifying critical knowledge as based on principles that differentiated it either from the natural sciences or the humanities through its orientation to self-reflection and emancipation. Although unsatisfied with Adorno and Horkheimer's thought presented in dialect of enlightenment, Habermas's, Habermas shares a view that, in the form of instrumental rationality, the era of modernity marks a move away from the liberation of enlightenment and toward a new form of enslavement. In Habermas's work, critical theory transcended its um, theoretical roots in German idealism and progressed closer to American pragmatism. Habermas is now influencing the philosophy of law in many countries, for example, the creation of the social philosophy of law in Brazil, and this theory has also had the potential to make the discourse of law one important institution of the modern world as a heritage of the Enlightenment. His ideas regarding the relationship between modernity and rationalization are, in his sense, strongly influenced by Max Weber. Habermas dissolved uh, further elements of critical theory derived from Hegelian German idealism. Although his thought remains broadly Marxist in its etymological approach, perhaps two most influential ideals are the concept of the public sphere and commutative action, the latter arriving partly as a reaction to post structural or so called postmodern challenges to the discourse of modernity. Habermas engaged in regular correspondence with Richard Rorty and a strong sense of philosophical pragmatism may be felt in his theory, though which frequently traverses the boundaries between so, um, sociology and philosophy. Okay, next part here. Uh, postmodern critical social theory, a critical theory and academic field. While modernist critical theory as described above, concerns itself with forms of authority and injustice that accompanied the evolution of industrial and corporate capitalism as a political economic system. Postmodern critical theory politicizes social problems by situating them in historical and cultural contexts to implicate themselves in the process of collecting and analyzing data and to revitalize their findings, quote-unquote. Meaning itself is seen as unstable due to the rapid transformation of social structures. As a result, the focus of research is centered on local manifestations rather than broad generalizations. Postmodern critical research is also characterized by the crisis of representation, which rejects the idea that a researcher's work is an objective depiction of a stable other. Instead, many postmodern scholars have adopted alternatives that encourage reflection about the politics and poetics of their work. In these accounts, the embodied collaborative dialogue, dialogic and improvisational aspects of qualitative research are clarified. The term critical theory is often appropriated when an author works with sociological terms, yet attacks the social or human sciences that's attempting to remain outside those frames of inquiry. Michel Foucault is one of these authors. Jean 
Nor would R. These two names came up last week in last week's video. Has also been described as a critical theorist to the extent that he was an unconventional and critical sociologist. This appropriation is similarly casual, holding little or no relation to the Frankfurt School. Jurgen Habermas of the Frankfurt School is one of the key critics of postmodernism. Critical theory is focused on language, symbols of communication, and social construction. Communication studies. Next part. From the 1960s and the 1970s onward, language, symbolism, text, and meaning came to be seen as a theoretical foundation for the humanities, though the influence of Ludwig Wittgenstein, Ferdinand de Saussure, George Herbert Mead, Noam Chomsky, Hans, George Gadamer, Roland Barthes, and Jacques Derrida, and other thinkers in linguistics and analytic philosophy, structural linguistics, symbolic interactionism, hermeneutics, semiology, linguistically oriented psychoanalysis, uh, Jacqueline Lacan and Alfred Lorenzer, and deconstruction. When, in the 1970s and 1980s, Jurgen Habermas redefined critical social theory as a study of communication, i.e. communicative competence and communicative rationality on the one hand, distorted communication on the other. Next part, pedagogy. Pedagogy. Critical theorists have widely credited Paulo Freire for the first application of critical theory towards education slash uh, ped pedag pedagogy. They considered his best known work, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, a seminal text in what is now known as the philosophy and social movement of critical pedagogy. I don't know if I'm saying that right. P E D A G O G Y. For a history of the emergence of critical theory in the field of education, see Isaac Goatsman. 2016, the critical turn in education from Marxist critique to post-structuralist feminist to critical theorists of race, New York, uh, wrote Ledge. Okay, now for the last part of this article, for the basis, or in a nutshell, critical theory, the criticisms. While critical theorists have been frequently defined as Marxist intellectuals, their tendency to denounce some Marxist concepts and to combine Marxism analysis with other sociological and philosophical trends, traditions, sorry, have resulted in the accusations of revisionism by classical, orthodox, and analytical Marxists, and by Marxist slash Leninist philosophers. Martin Jay has stated that the first generation of critical theory is best understood as not promoting a specific philosophical agenda or a specific ideology, but as a gadfly of other systems. Critical theory has been criticized not for offering any clear roadmap to political action following critique, often explicitly repugnating any solutions such as with Herbert Marx's concept of the Great Refusal, which promoted uh, abstaining from engaging in active political change. Okay, so once again, this is Pastor Sean. Thank you for listening to this video for the basis of critical theory in a nutshell, pretty much. So once again, thanks for watching this video, and God bless.